Hello, my name is Emma and in today's video we are going to talk about restaurant English. Specifically, we are going to talk about the check or the bill. I'll explain what those words mean. We're going to talk about who pays for the meal at a restaurant and what is the culture or the traditions surrounding who pays. And then we are going to practice some common words we might use at the end of the meal to talk about the bill or the check. So let's get started. So I have here two words, the bill or the check. These words mean the same thing. You can use either of these words in a restaurant. What do they mean? Well, the bill or the check is that little piece of paper you get at the end of a meal. It tells you how much money you need to pay. So the bill or the check is the money you pay at the end of the meal. How do you ask for this at a restaurant? Well, at the very end of the meal, you might put your finger up, um, that's the custom here, and you might say, the bill please. You might say this to the server or the waitress or the waiter, You'd say, the bill please. Or you might say, check please. Okay, sometimes you might not even say anything. You might just do a hand gesture to show what you mean, especially if it's a really busy, loud restaurant. But these are the two words you would use to ask for um, that little piece of paper that tells you how much money you owe for your meal. So here is the big question. Drum roll. Do -do 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 -do. Who pays for the meal? So imagine this, you're going to a restaurant with a bunch of people and at the very end of your meal, the bill comes. Who pays? So this is actually quite a complicated question and answer. The answer to who pays is it's very cultural and it really depends on the situation. So I'm going to give you some examples now of who might pay the bill at the restaurant. Okay, so I said it depends who pays. So what does it depend on? Well, let's look at some different situations. The first one is a business dinner. So maybe you've been invited to a dinner for work. Who pays? Well, usually it's the person who invites everyone out or the boss or the host. Okay, so if um, you've been invited to a dinner, usually the, the host will pay. If you're going to dinner or lunch or, or you're going to a restaurant with coworkers or your friends, then, and again, this is very cultural. In general, in North America, you can split the bill, which means each person pays the same percentage of the bill. So everyone pays, you know, if there's three of you, maybe one person pays a third, a third, and a third of the bill. So that's one possibility to, to split it. You might also just pay for yourself. That's very common too, where everyone just pays for themselves. Or, some people don't like paying for themselves, they find it awkward. So what they might say is, I'll, I'll cover it this time. I'll pay for the meal this time. And someone else will pay next time. I have a friend, my friend Lara, her and I do it this way. Whenever we go to a restaurant, some of the times I pay and some of the times she pays. So we take turns. With other friends, I will pay for myself only. And then with other people, I might just, where we all pay equally, we split the bill equally. So it depends on your friends. It depends on your coworkers. I find I do all of these things. What about romantic dates? Okay, so you are on a date with somebody. Who pays? This is not an easy question. Even for people from North American culture, this is still a really tricky, complicated question. Again, it depends. Some of the options are, you might split the bill, where you each pay half. This is called going Dutch. 
Um, so that, that can be one option. You, you split the bill 50-50. Sometimes the man pays and the woman offers to pay. So she says, I'll pay or, you know, let me pay. And the man says, no, no, I've got this. So that can happen sometimes. Sometimes you pay for your own meal. The, the one person pays for theirs, you pay for yours. That can happen on a date too. Um, or sometimes you might take turns. You might say, I'll cover dinner, you cover drinks. I'll cover the movie, you can cover the, the bill at the restaurant. So that is another option. Again, it depends on who you're going on the date with. Some people who might be more traditional might want the man to pay and the woman doesn't pay. Um, some people who um, are maybe of the younger generation or, um, you know, uh, different, different groups of people, they might actually do 50-50. So it really depends. And again, who pays is very cultural. So we've talked about what the word the check and the bill means. We've talked about who pays the check or the bill and how to ask for it. Now what we are going to do is we are going to learn some other important vocabulary when we're talking about the bill. We're going to talk about how to argue to pay the bill. This is also another custom in North America. People often argue who will pay. Okay, so this makes it even a little bit more complicated. I'm going to show you an example of an argument and the different words people might use to do this, um, this fun argument. All right, so let's look at an example of a friendly argument where two people discuss who pays for the meal at the restaurant. So I have here my two friends, Adrian and Debbie. Now imagine Adrian and Debbie are on a romantic date. This is the kind of conversation you might hear at the end of the date. You might notice some of the words are in blue. These are the words I want you to really learn. And the reason is they are very common words we use in restaurants. So let's get started. This is what Adrian says. He says, this is my treat. My treat means I'm going to pay. This is my treat. I'm going to pay. Debbie says, no, I want to cover dinner. Cover means pay for. So Debbie's saying, no, I want to cover dinner. This means, no, I want to pay. Adrian says, I insist. Dinner is on me. On me means I'm going to pay for it. So uh, cover, my treat, on me, they're all the same. They're all different ways to say I'm paying. So Adrian says, I insist. Dinner is on me. Debbie says, are you sure? So that's what she says, but in her head, I think she probably expected this. And Adrian says, yes. Then Debbie says, thank you. I'll cover the tip. Or Debbie might say, thank you, I'll cover drinks, or I'll cover the next time we go out. What Debbie's saying is that she's going to pay the tip. So what is the tip? That's the next question. In North America, um, you get your bill, and usually the tip, it might be on the bill, it might not be, but what the tip is, is it's a little bit of extra money you're going to pay that goes to the server or the waiter or the waitress, okay? So the tip is um, something that we often do in North America where we will tip 15% of the bill. So you have your bill and then on top of the bill, you pay an extra 15% and that goes to the, the waiter, the waitress or the server. In North America, in general, a tip is required. It is customary. People expect it. If you don't give a tip, it's seen as very impolite or rude. So almost everybody tips in North America. What about in places like England or Australia or New Zealand? 
The truth is, tipping is very different from culture to culture. I'm not an expert when it comes to what people do in England, in Australia, or New Zealand. I know that it is very different than North America when it comes to tipping. So what I recommend is wherever you travel, find out what the tipping custom is. I can tell you that in Canada and the United States, you usually tip 15%, or you might tip more if it's really good service, like 20%. But it's almost mandatory here. Um, nobody says that, but it actually is expected. So we've covered a lot today. We've covered words like the bill, the check. We've talked about how to ask for the bill or the check. We've looked at who usually pays the bill or the check. And then we've learned some new vocabulary like my treat, cover, on me, tip. And we've talked about tipping customs and what they are like in North America. So thank you for watching this video. To practice more, I recommend you check out our website at www.ingvid.com. On our website, there's actually a quiz where you can practice what you learned today. You can also subscribe to my channel. I have many more resources on English vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, and many more topics. Just remember when you subscribe to ring the bell so that way you can get all the latest videos that I create. One last thing is you can also check out my website at www.teacheremma.com. There you can find more English resources. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.